On Tuesday, May 7th, Vieta Accords meteor shower will peak, setting off a worldwide celestial show. Will you see them in your night sky? Well, stick around to find out. Hello, hello everyone, it's Daily Space Observations and welcome back to another video. I'm sorry it's been a while, but school hasn't been so kind, not to mention the weather also has been pretty rough. I don't think I've gotten a perfectly clear night in about a week and a half, so uh, yeah. And my finder scope broke too, so that's something I gotta deal with. Uh, but I hope all of you had a great duration of time that I haven't been uploading for. Again, I'm very sorry, I really gotta find a good uploading schedule, don't I? But please, subscribe if you can, and turn on that notification bell so that you won't miss any of my latest videos. And if you'd be so kind, please follow me on my Instagram where I sometimes post sneak peeks of my latest YouTube video. So yeah, I think I've said enough. It's time for the space review. All right, let's go. Vieta Accords meteor shower reaches its peaked activity on the night of May 7 to 8. From your location, the number of visible meteors will be highest at 4 a.m. Expect to see one meteors per hour. At the time, at the time the shower's radiant, the point in the sky from which meteors appear to originate will be 18 degrees above the eastern horizon. So, I, I'll just explain one small thing. That is in my location, so I only see one in my location because I happen to live in a quite light polluted place. In fact, I almost live in the heart of my city, which is a very big one which means I don't get a good view of most meteor shots, which sucks, but I'll see a shooting star someday. So now, if I go back to, it will be, it will be 18 degrees above the eastern horizon, it's radiant, that will come to your advantage, and I'll tell you why. Do you know what an earth grazer is. If you don't, I'll tell you exactly what that is. An earth grazer is a shooting star that is both brighter and slower. Its trails last several s seconds and they hit the atmosphere when they're traveling either slower or faster than the, um, than the average speed of other meteors in their meteor shower. So yeah, this shower does have a significantly higher chance of you seeing an earth grazer. So that is a very good sign. But this meteor shower, it's about average, it's nothing special. At max, you will see 12, uh, so at max, you'll see 12 shooting stars an hour and that's only if you got a clear and very dark sky at your hands which a lot of people don't okay let's get back into the text this shower can produce 50 meteors per hour under ideal conditions but light pollution both from the moon and man-made and man-made sources can spoil an otherwise good meteor shower Fortunately, on the night of the shower, light from a waxing crescent moon will interfere with seeing meters only in the first part of the night, so you'll have plenty of meter watching time. So that is good. The moon will only be a problem in the first few, in the first couple hours of seeing the meters. So. That's very good, that will also come to your advantage. So, the sad thing is I probably won't see any shooting stars because it, I, 
I think it's gonna be cloudy. It's gonna be cloudy for most of the week in, in Canada, which sucks. But if you somehow see an earth grazer, then be sure to send me a picture, if possible, on my Instagram. I'd appreciate it because I've never seen a shooting star. So I think you have a about like a decent chance if you live in a very remote place then and it's a clear sky then then there is no way that you won't see a shooting star and if you live in an urban area then try your best to go as far from it as possible and try to go to a place with with little to no light pollution so I think this will wrap it up for our second episode of Will You See It In Your Night Sky. I hope you've enjoyed and I'll see you soon. I really hope, like I, I promise, I promise I'll upload th this week, okay? Peace out.